thank you, sir. And uh, thank you for the uh, kind introduction and giving me this opportunity. So, a topic for uh, given to me today is uh, is diabetes and inflammatory disorder. Biomarkers tell the story. And uh, continuing with what Dr. Kalam has just said, uh, we were talking about COVID-19. So, COVID-19, we all know that that led to a state of chronic inflammation also, that is what is long COVID. And we have seen a surge in patients with type 2 diabetes following COVID infections. And those who have had pre-diabetes, they were having, uh, they were convert, uh, actually converted into type 2 diabetes. So, uh, the COVID again has established that chronic inflammation can incite, uh, can trigger a mildly where inflammation can lead to hyperglycemia and it can worse, lead to worsening of the hyperglycemia as well as the new onset diabetes. So, does the biomarkers, they tell us anything? So, if you look at the various, uh, is, uh, if you look at this uh, circle, you will find that the diabetes uh, has, uh, uh, inflammation can lead to type 2 diabetes and I will be brief in uh, telling what is happening. So, there are many var uh, various studies and uh, uh, which have shown that and they have provided the first possible evidence that what can be the association between inflammation and the diabetes. Over a century ago, the administration of high doses of sodium sal salicylate led to decreased glycosuria in people with a suspected or definite diagnosis of the diabetes. So, this was the first instance where it uh, appeared that uh, uh, the anti-inflammatory action can uh, uh, prevent uh, di diabetes. So, later studies on the role of inflammation in diabetes revealed that this hypoglycemic action was related to the inhibition of the serine kinase uh, IKK beta which correlates with the post receptor action of the insulin. So, this is as long as 100 years ago. A landmark study of the correl to correlate inflammation with diabetes was conducted in uh, animal models and it revealed that the role of tumor necrosis factor alpha in obesity and particularly in insulin resistance and as well as the diabetes. Another epidemiological association of the inflammation with obesity and type 2 diabetes were made when circulating concentration of the markers and mediators of inflammation and acute phase reactants like fibrinogen, C-reactive protein, IL-6, plasminogen activator and sialic acid and the white cells have been shown to be elevated in these conditions. So, uh, this was the historical pr uh, perspective uh, which has uh, initiated the talk that can uh, inflammation lead to diabetes. And if you look at this slide, this actually sums up a lot of things. Now, we know that there are various inflammatory markers in the form of TNF-alpha, interleukin-1 beta, platelet activating factor, TGF beta, uh, protein kinase C, arachidonic acid. So, activation ultimately all this leads to the activation of the endosomal NADPH oxidase and leading to the generation of the reactive oxygen species and activation of the NFK beta pathway. So, this leads to the inflammation and this inflammation itself is responsible for the metabolic syndrome, atherosclerosis as well as the diabetes. So, again, uh, uh, I have just shown the value of the inflammation, but if you look at the top, you will find that the genetic predisposition, somebody may be more predisposed genetically to the inflammation, while the age is also a contributing factor and the environment can also trigger. For example, COVID-19 is something which you can say uh, came to people fr from the environment itself leading to changes in the adipose uh, uh, tissue as well as the immune system, uh, generation of all the inflammatory markers, milieu, leading to changes in the metabolism and ultimately uh, causing uh, hyperglycemia, dyslipidemia, obesity, hypertension and various cardiometabolic disorders. So, and, and result is cardiovascular disease also. This is very interesting that it is not just the type 2 diabetes where inflammation plays an important role. It is also the type 1 diabetes where the T cells uh, through the inflammatory pathways, they can actually lead to beta cell destruction mediated by the autoimmune beta cell destruction. And why it is important to understand this slide today is that because just today, a few hours before, the uh, FDA has approved teplizumab as one of the anti-inflammatory, anti-immune therapy you can say, which can delay the onset of type 1 diabetes by a couple of years. So, this is latest and how does this works? This is a humanized monoclonal antibody binds to the T cell co-receptor CD3 acts as partial agonist. It is administered as a 30 minute IV infusion over a 12 day or 14 day outpatient treatment and supporting clinical data has been there. That's why it has been approved by the FDA and you can see uh, here 
that this is the T lymphocyte which is playing an actually very, very important role in autoimmune beta cell destruction. So this is the latest and this has been announced on November 17th itself that the US FDA has approved the NTCD3 monoclonal antibody that is tapizumab to delay the onset of the clinical type 1 diabetes in people aged 8 years and older who are at high risk for developing the condition. So even type 1 diabetes is now having a role where the uh, modulation of the immune system to change the inflammation can delay the onset of the type 1 diabetes by a couple of years. If we look at the various things in the type 2 diabetes, uh, I will just run through these slides because it will sound like a repetition because the mechanism of action is uh, more or the same. There is a high metabolic load, excess calorie intake, changes in the adipocytes, adipocyte hypertrophy, hyper, uh, hyperplasia as well as dysfunction and here the immune cells are recruited again leading to adipocyte inflammation and the insulin resistance. On the other side, increase in free fatty acids, increase reduced adiponectin level, increased leptin level, high demand for insulin places the beta cells under the stress and this stress leads and uh, again the cytokine production and the immune cell recruitment, islet cell inflammation happens, dysfunction happens leading to the insulin insufficiency. So a cascade of insulin resistance as well as the insulin insufficiency is happening leading to, uh, to the development of the type 2 diabetes. So this is again uh, the same thing you can see the liver as well as the tissue as well as the pancreas all are uh, getting inflamed and uh, contributing to the development of the diabetes. This is a very busy slide but I will not go into detail of this. Again you can see both hyperglycemia as well as the hyperlipidemia through various mechanisms can lead to the various complications like nephropathy, retinopathy as well as the neuropathy which we see in our patients with type 2 diabetes. Also, it is important to understand that the environmental factor as well as the genetic factors may also be uh, contributing the chronic low-grade inflammation which can ultimately lead to this various complications associated with type 2 diabetes. These are certain publications and the evidences which are being published in one of the very good articles is in 2011 that is in the Nature Reviews Immunology that is type 2 diabetes as an inflammatory disease followed by trends in immunology and then JAMA as well as the one paper in the cell research which talks about the uh, uh, role of the inflammation in the development of the diabetes. These are various bio, uh, biochemical markers. Uh, I will skip these slides. We know that uh, WBC count, the serum cytokine markers like IL-6, TNF-alpha, IL-10, uh, then acute phase reactants like high sensitive CRP, serum amyloid A protein, fibrinogen, immune cell markers like CD8 plus uh, T cells and CD4 T cells and CD19 B cells. So these, are, it is these are various studies and uh, evidence that has linked inflammatory markers to the development of diabetes. For example, Pradhan et al, almost 188 cases, length of follow four years and CRP and IL-6. They studied, another group studied CRP and fibrinogen, another studied white cell count, CRP, CRP and adiponectin and most of these studies they found that the elevated level of the CRP as well as the WBC can incite inflammation and lead to uh, uh, dysglycemia. Also uh, high sensitive CRP we all know that it is again considered as a severe risk marker in diabetes and we have seen that even in patients post COVID elevated C uh, CRP level as are being considered as one of the markers of the inflammation and increasing the risk of uh, cardiovascular uh, diseases. What is more important and what I want to uh, show you is that there are various kind of drugs which are available and uh, we know that virus like COVID-19, obesity, hyperglycemia, changes in inflammation, diabetes, but metformin, DPP-4 inhibitors, GLP-1 analogs, SGLD-2 inhibitors, NTIL-1 therapy. So is there something which can target the inflammation? So we know that one of the molecule which we are using in India is uh, uh, hydroxychloroquine. It, it is approved in India and approved by uh, uh, DGCI for use in patients with type 2 diabetes though with certain riders and it can be used to reduce the inflammation. This is uh, the ACE uh, guidelines in 2017 and this in one of the table they have mentioned that inflammatory markers like uh, CRP and lipoprotein uh, and PLA2 as a non-traditional risk factors for the development of the type 2 diabetes. So uh, this is the different markers, CRP, we know that it is derived from the IL-6 dependent hepatic biosynthesis, primary marker of the acute phase response. It is associated with type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance, IL-6, 
WBC again. So IL-6 exhibit immunoregulatory actions and are involved in glucose, homeostasis and metabolism through action on pancreatic beta cells, adipocytes, hepatocytes and the skeletal muscles. And uh, WBC uh, is a marker of immunity and inflammation we all know. So WBC count has been predictive of worsening insulin action, secretory function and type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease. Many a times patient comes to us with a report and we find that TLC is elevated and, uh, and we don't see any obvious reason. So sometimes it is the inflammation which is there may be contributing to the uh, inflammatory myelin. I will not go into the details of the fibrinogen, PAI, IL-18 uh, and the IL-IRA. But it is important to understand that targets are important because a lot, of, a lot is happening in the research and you can see one of the drug is Anakindra which is IL-1 receptor blockade and it, it main, there are various studies which have been done and it has been found that it can, uh, it can because of this, it's anti-inflammatory action, it can help in uh, uh, management of the glycemia. Also, there are drugs which are, which are targeted the IL-1 beta antagonism like uh, Givokizumab also IL-1 beta antagonism through the canakinumab. So these are various antibodies mediated drugs which are targeting the therapy uh, for the inflammation in uh, diabetes. Another thing is that we also have IKK beta and F kappa beta inhibition through the cell salate and these drugs have been shown to be effective in reducing HbA1c, fasting plasma glucose, triglyceride as well as the adiponectin. TNF antagonism has also been studied and so this is, it has been found that TNF antagonism has no effect on insulin sensitivity. Another study, no effect on insulin sensitivity but it reduces the CRP, improves the insulin uh, secretion and no effect on the insulin sensitivity. So these are the different mechanisms which are being now targeted by the researchers and the investigators to develop newer armamentarium for the management of the diabetes. So uh, I would like to conclude by saying that inflammation may play a very, very crucial role in the pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes, also to some extent in the pathophysiology of type 1 diabetes. Furthermore, atherosclerosis which is accelerated and more pronounced in patients with uh, metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes and responsible for a high mor uh, morbidity, uh, morbidity rate in population is also characterized by increased silent inflammation, especially in the arterial wall. Patients with elevated HSCRP levels are at higher risk to develop type 2 diabetes and CVD. And if inflammation plays a crucial role in the cardiometabolic diseases, so developing successful targets which can actually target these inflammatory markers and uh, reduce the inflammation can help with the management of the glycemia. I would like to invite you today night for this webinar which will be happening 1 p.m. ET time. So if you get some time then please join us for this webinar which is organized by the ADA. I will be moderating this webinar uh, with the blessings of Anus sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. So in